You're grateful to be in the house of the Lord just one more time. Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Come on, bless his name on this morning. He woke you up. He started you on your way. God clothed you in your right mind. So we deserve to give God all glory, honor, and praise. Come on, he deserves all glory. He deserves all honor, and he deserves all praise. Come on, if God has done anything for you on this week, can we just bless his name? Can we just take this time? to lift up the name of Jesus. Come on, glory to your name, oh God. Glory to your name, oh King. Hallelujah. If you know that he's able, we invite you to stay standing and stay worshiping. If you know that God is able to do exceeding abundantly, above all that we could ever ask or think, if you know that I have not seen and ear has not heard what God is getting ready to do, Come on, I just ask you to get something on your mind that you're expecting God to do, a way that you're expecting God to make. And I dare you to tell your situation and your circumstance. Come on, church, say, my God is able. Come on, even now, say, my God is able. Exceedingly, abundantly, above. The power that worketh within, within you. Oh, God is able to do just what He said He would do. He's gonna fulfill every. Do we know that we serve an able and willing God? 
So don't give up on God. Oh, don't give up on God. He won't, he won't, he won't, he won't, he won't give up for you. Don't give up on God. No matter what it looks like, sounds like, don't feel but you're breathing this morning. Mm. Hallelujah to his name. 
I greet you in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. To that God, where every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. We greet you and we welcome you to Hemingway Memorial AME Church, where we are fondly called the way. Oh, why do they call us the way? Because we serve a Jesus that said he is the way, the truth, and the life. Why do we call him the way? Because the only way we can get to God is but through Jesus. Why do we call him the way? Because he's made a way out of no way. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. That's why we call it the way. Uh, on behalf of our pastor, Krista Thiessen, and First Lady Tanya, I say welcome, whether you are in the place or online. But if you're online, I just dare you to say, Welcome and hallelujah. Hallelujah, everybody. Can everybody shout hallelujah in this place? Can everybody just wave your hand in this place? Can anybody say thank you, Jesus? Hallelujah. Thank you, God, because he's worthy. My heart is full this morning. And I'm so grateful to be here because we serve a God. He decided to allow us to wake up. Hmm. Somebody didn't. They are sitting on their lane on their cooling bed, but he decided to allow us to get up this morning. But because of that, there's a relationship that needs to take place. But a relationship requires communication. And so as Reverend Beverly, Beverly Calloway comes and prays us to the throne of grace, I ask you to pray for her as she prays for her. And, and, and then as she comes, settle in your spirits and center in on God. Because he's the only one that can do it. Amen. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord, church. I don't know about you this morning, but I believe that the God that I serve, that we serve, is able. He's able to do anything as long as we know that we can go to him in prayer and ask him. He is faithful, and he will grant us our prayer, but we got to have that relationship with him. You know, when we call upon his name, he needs to know who we are. And all he has to do is look down on us and say, I know her because she's my child. So we, I believe, I believe with all my heart that he just tunes in and he listens to us. And he listens as we will now go to him in prayer. So while I'm praying aloud, won't you pray with me? Won't you pray with me? So that we will all be on one accord, lifting up the name of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Let us pray, Almighty God, the God who is able to keep us through all things, through all adversities, the God who woke us up this morning and breathed on us and allowed us to rise up and come out and worship uh, for him one more time. We thank you for God who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can think and ask. That God that we have come to worship this morning, that God that we have come to praise this morning, and now we lift up our voices to him. Come Holy Spirit, speak now, heavenly love. Speak Holy Spirit to your people so that they might be able to hear you, so that they might be able to experience you, so that they know that they are in your house and they are here for a reason this morning. They are here to hear the word of God be being preached. They are here to hear the word of God sang through a song that's going to lift them.
them up out of whatever is troubling them. So we ask right now that we just shut out everything, everything that we've left behind this morning so that we can truly worship and praise the Lord. We are here, oh Heavenly Father, to be filled up because some of us have gone through stuff this past week. We, you know individually, oh Heavenly Father, what everybody sits in need of. So free them up, oh Heavenly Father. If there's sickness in their body, we're asking right now in the name of Jesus, Jesus that you touch dear Lord. If there is anyone who is suffering from loss of loved ones, we're asking, Lord, that you continue to comfort them and let them know that you are the way to truth and life. And you will, oh Heavenly Father, restore, oh Heavenly Father, so that they will be able to continue in this life, dear Lord. We thank you, oh Heavenly Father, because we believe that anything that you have promised us, that you are faithful and you will deliver, but we've got to stay in tune with you, dear God. So help us, dear Heavenly Father. Help us in our individual lives. Help us, oh Heavenly Father, to bless families, those that may be a little bit separate, Lord. We're asking in the name of Jesus that you bring them all back together, oh Heavenly Father. Restore broken relationships, oh Heavenly Father, so that we all may know that we worship a true God. So dear God, we're asking this morning that you will continue to bless this service, dear Lord. Bless this service, oh Heavenly Father. Bless our pastor, oh Heavenly Father, as he stands, dear Lord. Oh Lord, as he stands, oh Heavenly Father, just depending on you to give him word, oh Heavenly Father. Word that will touch hearts of the people, oh Heavenly Father, that are here. That the people, oh Heavenly Father, that are out in all walks. People, oh Heavenly Father, that are on YouTube, Facebook. Let the word flow, oh Heavenly Father, to all ends, Lord God. Continue to walk with him, dear Lord. Continue to build him up, oh Heavenly Father, so that he might continue the work that you have set before him. We bless his family, oh Heavenly Father, as they continue to surround him, Lord God, with all that you have given them, oh Heavenly Father, to help him to do the work before him, dear God. We just thank you for each and every person this morning. And we just pray, Lord God, that something that is said this morning will continue to encourage their hearts, encourage their hearts, that will encourage their spirit, dear Lord, to continue to walk. And don't give up, dear God, because you're not going to give up on us. You promised us, oh Heavenly Father, and we believe you, dear God. We trust you, dear God. We're dependent on you, dear God, because we are weak, dear God, but you are strong, dear God. And you are able, oh Heavenly Father, to deliver us from whatever state we may be in. We just need to continue our walk with you, oh Heavenly Father. Don't give up, don't give up, because God is not gonna give up on us. Because he's called us out of darkness. We are his children. And a father never forgets their children. Don't matter how far we may stray from the father, but he's always there waiting on us to come back. So come back, oh Heavenly Father. Let everybody come back, dear Lord, to the Lord because that's our calling. That's what he wants us to do in this world. Change has come back. So we thank you and we praise you as we continue to worship this morning and lift up your name. In the name of Jesus, we pray and ask all things. Amen, amen, and amen. Good morning, everyone. Again, it's so good to see everyone out this glorious spring morning. 
We thank the Lord. This scripture this morning will come from Psalm 118. That's Psalm 118. I'll be reading from verses uh, 20 through 26. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous shall enter. I will praise you for you have answered me and you have become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. and We will rejoice and be glad in it. Save now, I pray, O Lord. O Lord, I pray, send now prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The word of God for the people of God. Church, I know we could find one big choir. Find favor in your Say, Lord, please, Lord, please. I hear you, church. Hear my heart cry. Come on, say, because I'm desperately waiting. Just to be where you are. What will we do? What will we do? Say I'll travel near all Come on, raise it up. Say for your glory. For your glory. I will do. I will do. I'll do anything. Yeah. Just to see you. Just to see you. To behold you. Oh, oh. Say for your glory. I want to be where you are. I got to be where you are. I want to be where you are. Is that anybody's prayer on this morning? I got to be where you are. Say, I want to be, I want to be where you are. I got to be where
want to be where you are. You tell them yourself, I got to be where you are. I want to be where you are. I got to be, I got to be where you are. Said I want to be, I want to be where you are. Come on, lift it up. Say, I got to be where you are. I want to be, I want to be where you are. I got to be, I got to be where you are. Come on, if that's your prayer, can you just lift it up to him? If that's your prayer, can we just lift it up to him? If that's your prayer, can you just worship the name of If you have a prayer that says, if you're not there, I don't want to go. It doesn't matter how pretty it might look. It doesn't matter how comfortable it might seem. If you are not there, I don't want to be there. If you are not there, I don't want to be there. It doesn't matter how uncomfortable it makes me. It doesn't matter what I'm going to have to go through to get there. I got to see your face. I got to dwell in your presence. Because in your presence, there is peace. In your presence, there is joy. In your presence, there is love. Your presence, there is kindness. I gotta push it to your breath. Welcome. On behalf of our senior pastor, Reverend Kristen Natison and First Lady Tanya Natison, we thank you for joining us. Here are a few things happening this month at Hemingway, which we call The Way. Welcome to all of our visitors. We love having you here. We have a Connect card you will be receiving shortly. You can leave the card in the offering basket during offering time, hand it back to any usher, or drop it off in the giving boxes along the walls. If you prefer to complete the electronic version, scan the QR code now with your phone to submit it immediately. For our virtual visitors, please add your name in the comments so we can acknowledge you and scan the QR code now so that we can connect with you. We have some important dates, so please make a note of them. Get your phones ready to take a screenshot. It's Second Sunday. That means we worship at the Manor at Victoria Park in Temple Hills, Maryland at 2 o'clock p.m. today. Everyone is invited. The Prince George's County State's Attorney's Office is hosting an expungement fair right here at Hemingway. This is specifically for those who have had a Maryland arrest and or conviction. Join us on Saturday, April 20th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Register at pgsao.org forward slash event. Calling all women, yes you. We are excited to announce that April is women's season. Our theme, Healed, Holy, and Whole. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, which reads, May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have a powerful lineup in store. Wednesday, April 17th, Reverend Rhonda Tuck will be teaching evening Bible study at 7 o'clock p.m. on Zoom. Contact us for the Zoom passcode by emailing connect at HemingwayMemorialAME.org. Our kickoff is Sunday, April 21st during our 10.30 a.m. worship service. Reverend Dr. Valdez Snipes will be preaching. 
Get ready for Women's Season Revival on Wednesday, April 24th at 7 o'clock p.m. in person and online. Reverend Tracy Ross will be the preacher. This is open to everyone, women and men. Women's Day will be on Sunday, April 28th with Reverend Akeisha Jefferson preaching during our 10.30 a.m. worship service. Our children's church is the place to be. All children are invited to learn more about our great God with lesson plans just for them during the 10.30 a.m. worship experience. Parents and or guardians meet us on the lower level in the Gladys Taylor Memorial Hall to sign them in. We have something for everyone from our Wednesday prayer call, Noonday and Pastor's Evening Bible Study, Thursdays start with Men's Bible Study, and the new Young Adult Bible Study called The Way, YA, and The Word on the Street for the Youth. Visit our website for information on how to join us virtually. Don't forget to go to our website. It's your one-stop hub for all information about our ministry. Visit HemingwayMemorialAME.org for all Bible study links, membership portal, giving options, ministries, photos, and more. Connect with us socially. Please like, tag, subscribe, and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, X formerly known as Twitter, and TikTok at HMAME Church. Whether you are watching us online in our virtual sanctuary or sitting in person, take a minute to check in on Facebook right now. Go to your Facebook account, click check in as shown on the left screen, choose Hemingway Memorial AME on Gateway Boulevard, feel free to add any message you desire with your check in, and then click next and then share. All done! You have just done a form of digital evangelism. We serve and meet the needs of the community with our backpack giveaways, coat drives, food distributions, angel tree for any child, and so much more. To give, visit us on our website at HemingwayMemorialAME.org forward slash give. This includes using the Givelify app searching for Hemingway Memorial AME or PayPal using the links provided. We also have Cash App, dollar sign Hemingway Memorial. If you would like to set up recurring electronic donations, you can do so through the Givelify and PayPal platforms. Visit the website to see the video on how to set this up. You can stop reoccurring donations at any time. We accept checks made payable to the church, mailing it to 6330 Gateway Boulevard, District Heights, Maryland 20747. If you are in the area, please feel free to bring your donation to our Dropbox on the Blazer Drive side of the church. For those of you in the physical sanctuary, you can drop your offering in any one of the boxes along the wall or drop it in the offering basket during giving time. Thank you in advance for your giving. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. This past week, Bishop James Lavert Davis convened the 74th session of the Washington Annual Conference. And at this session, uh, pastors are appointed yearly to one-year terms. And at the end of that year, pastors can be reappointed or can be moved to different uh, charges. And so I have our report from the conference, a certificate of pastor's appointment. Uh, this is to certify that the Reverend Krishna Natisan is appointed to the pastoral charge of Hemingway Memorial AME Church. The said charge being under the jurisdiction of the Washington Annual Conference of the African Methodist Episcopal Church, given it under my hand and the denomination of seal at the Episcopal Room this 13th day of April in the year of our Lord 2024, signed on the behalf of the annual conference, James LaVert Davis, Servant Bishop. Let's please stand and welcome our pastor.
Somebody give God honor. Somebody give God glory. Somebody give God praise. We serve an amazing God. And I'm just grateful to be y'all pastor. Amen. I, I'm grateful to have another opportunity to serve the great people of Hemingway. I'm grateful to stand behind the holy desk and lift up the name of Jesus. I'm grateful for the opportunity to see the sick made well. I'm grateful to see the saved Lord, the Lord saved. I'm grateful, I'm grateful, I'm grateful. I'm thankful because I serve a mighty God, a mighty God. Somebody say, mighty God. I can't hear you one more time. We serve a Somebody say amen. Amen, amen, amen. I, I give God praise. I give God praise. We have so many wonderful things going on uh, in the life of the church. Amen. Amen. amen right? And can, any ladies in the house? Any ladies in the house? Any ladies in the house? All right, all right. It is women's season. Somebody ought to give God some, some praise. Amen. Healed, holy, and whole. That's the theme. That's the theme. Healed. Anybody need healing? Anybody need wholeness? Anybody want to walk holy? Somebody give God glory. Amen. And as you know, we have a powerful lineup uh, because on next week, next week, we have uh, a woman of God who I am delighted to say, y'all know I come from uh, Love AME Church. I am delighted to say that the woman who was scheduled to come is the new pastor of Love AME Church. Look how God just does stuff, amen? None other than the Reverend Dr. Valdez Snipes, an anointed woman of God, an experienced pastor, anointed, did I say anointed? An anointed woman of God, and she'll be here on next Sunday. Oh, did I tell y'all she's from North Carolina Central University? Oh, somebody know God knows how to let people soar. Amen, amen. I had no part in it, but I couldn't have wrote it any better. God knows how to do it. God knows how to do it. But uh, women's season is going to be powerful. And then next month, somebody say next month. Discipleship. I can't hear you. Because, uh, uh, you know, Jesus had disciples. Come on. Next month, discipleship. Discipleship. We're going to sign up for discipleship. Amen. 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 I promise you that if you get into the discipleship classes, this church will be the strongest that you ever seen. It. It'll be whatever the strongest time we going back there. It's going to be the strength that you want for your church. It's the strength that you want for your family. The strength that is needed when we get into the biblical principles of discipleship. Because God called us to go and bear what? Anybody know? Fruit. The disciples go and bear fruit. And God is preparing us to do just that. How y'all doing? Y'all doing good? Y'all sounding good. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But I do want to let you know... Uh, Sometimes you got to trust God and God will make a way beyond the things that you can ask, think, and or imagine. While at the annual conference, before even going, God showed me something and he, he showed me something. So uh, I, 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 I just prayed in faith for things. Amen. Don't get mad at me. I got to do what God asked me to do. Amen. Isn't it crazy? God wants stuff, but he wants you to pray for it. But is it really crazy because any of y'all want stuff for your kids, but you want them to come and ask for it? You don't want to just have to give them everything. Some things they need to come and ask for, and you ready to give it to them, right? And so uh, 
God showed me something when the brilliant coach of the Gamecocks of South Carolina wrapped up and uh, uh, Dawn Staley, right? Yeah, anybody know what I'm talking about? Uh, but, but when she finished winning, this woman, this woman did what had never been done. She didn't only have, and, 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 and fact check me, I may be incorrect, but I believe it was the first undefeated season plus a championship win. Is, win. is that correct? That's correct. That's correct. But she said something, and she said, you know what this is? This is, I know the God that I serve, and that this is what you call uncommon favor. Amen? And it, it resonated in my spirit, and, and God called me to talk to my father in ministry and to my brother in ministry and to call the family together at the annual conference. We found a little spot, a little corner, a little nook that was open to anybody who, and we weren't the only people in there, but we had some prayer in there. And he told me to declare for all of this tree uncommon favor. And I want you to know at this here annual conference, we saw uncommon favor. We saw uncommon favor. I, you may not get it. It's uncommon to happen what happened at this annual conference. It's bittersweet, but it's shown up sweet. It's a sweet thing when people can uh, live out their dreams. Amen. Anybody want their dreams to come to pass? Put your hands together if you want your dreams to come to pass. Now, if you want your dreams to come to pass, how much more do we want the people we love's dreams to come to pass? I am so delighted to tell you that Reverend Devin Martin is the new pastor of Bethel AME Cambridge. Put your hands together. Put your hands together. That's how you order it. I said, Reverend Devin Martin, Pastor Devin Martin is the new pastor of Bethel AME Cambridge. I'm here to tell you that I saw something that I ain't never seen in AME also happen. Reverend A. Michelle Matthews is the pastor of Preston Circuit. Oh, I, I, I can do better than that. I'm here to tell you that I've never seen a woman go out to get a charge outside of the brownies and the flakes to see it happen in such a way. But Reverend Kelly Bell Waters is the new pastor of Preston Circuit. They got a circuit together, co-appointed. It don't happen. It don't happen. You can't tell me the two ladies you know. You can call your neighbor. It doesn't happen. But God is pouring out uncommon favor on us. Stretch your hands in all directions. I don't know. I, I, I know they're in Baltimore. The, 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 uh, uh, the sisters are in Baltimore. Reverend Devon is on the Eastern Shore. And so we're spreading our Hemingway wings. Dear Father God, we pray. Oh, and Reverend Devon texted me last night. He already got a new member and two people got saved and he ain't even stepped in the church yet. You better give God glory. Dear Father God, we ask that you're touching them. We're praying, dear Father God, for your anointing to be upon them. I speak it over Reverend De Dr. Valdez. I, I speak it over Reverend Devin Martin. I speak it over Reverend A. Michelle Matthews. I speak it over Reverend Kelly Bell Waters. We come and touch and agree and believe in faith that they shall be salvation stations. They shall be equipping stations. They shall have impact in the building and out the building. They have impact in the community. We thank you that there'll be a beacon of light for all that come around. We thank 
thank you for the uncommon favor that rests on them. And we said we're doing it together. Tell you, somebody say amen. Together. 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 So I hope y'all ready because you know we're going to have to get that bus good and oiled up because we got some trips to make. Somebody ought to say, I said, we got some trips to make. Amen? Amen. There'll be evening trips, though. They will be evening trips. There'll be evening trips. Amen. As we know, uh, we send greetings all the way to Virginia to our presiding elder Hayward and the Hayward family. Amen. Amen. On their retirement, uh, y'all know about half the church went down there to Virginia. Amen. We, we give God honor, glory, and praise. But they had retirement started on yesterday and on today. Uh, most of our clergy, you know, he and, and, and put to your hands together for 13 years pastoring here at Hemingway. Amen. 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 We sent a we sent a nice a nice gift from him away. Amen. Amen. If you didn't get a chance to sow a seed, uh, you can sow a seed and uh, just make sure that you indicate in the other box uh, that it is for uh, the retirement. Amen. 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 Leaders, you know, you probably got an email. Amen. We just really ask the leaders to do it, but we want to open it up for anybody else that would like to do that as well. Amen. At this time, I'd like to do our welcome. I just want to check the house, check the house, check the house. Amen. We give God honor, glory, and praise. Uh, let's put our hands together. Yeah, a lot of our musicians are down there singing too. <laughs> our singers are down there as well. But I praise God. We have some singers in the house. We got some uh, 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 musicians in the house. We got a combination. Uh, half the praise team going down to bless them in a mighty way, taking the way love all the way to uh, Virginia. Somebody say amen. amen. If you celebrated a birthday either last week or this week, would you mind standing if you celebrated a birthday? Do we have any birthdays in the house? Anybody? Um, um, moms, would you please stand? Do this for me. Your birthday is on Tuesday. My, my, my beautiful mother-in-law, mother-in-love, praise God. Turn around, turn around. Just say hi so they know who you are. Turn around. That's about all I can get out of moms. We had to put the camera on her, amen? But come on, let's sing this song for my moms. Uh-oh, uh-oh, there it is. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to ya, happy birthday. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday, amen, amen. Bless the Lord. Do we have any anniversaries? Anybody celebrate that anniversary either last week or this week? Any anniversaries in the house? All right, all right, we're going to keep on moving. Do we have any here, any visitors in the house? Any visitors here? If you would stand, if you had stand, praise God, praise God. We give God honor, we give God glory, we give God praise. Thank you for coming and worshiping with us. We are Hemingway Memorial AME Church finally known as the way. Keep standing. They're going to bring a bag to you. I do want to let you know, be welcome here in the house of God. Be free here in the house of God. Now I'm going to ask you to give your name, number. We're going to draw blood, get social security. No, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. We're just glad that you came, and we hope that you enjoyed the worship experience. Inside, you may be seated. Inside, inside of the bags, there'll be a card in there that you can fill out, a connection card. And when we have the offering, feel free just to drop it in Drop it in there. Amen. Should be a pen in there as well. But we give God honor, glory, and praise. And listen, whenever you come to Hemingway, you are what? Somebody say welcome. Amen. Amen. We give God honor, glory, and praise. Oh, I'm sorry. 
y'all, y'all can just bust in with it. Just dealing with me, just break out in that song, you know. We, and this is a special dedication song for you, my sister, and for you, my brother. And, you know, I almost got in the way of it, but thank you for a good wife that said, you want us to sing the song? We are so glad that you came to Hemingway. Stewards will come forward and be prepared to raise our offering. And uh, this is, of course, the time when uh, we are able to participate in the uh, giving toward the kingdom building here at Hemingway. We use our tithes and offerings to not only provide for the comfort of the building, uh, also we have um, overhead as a uh, church, we have to take care of our staff, we have to um, take care of the community. We feed the homeless, uh, clothe the naked. This is also the second Sunday where we lift up our capital campaign. The capital campaign is the fund that we use to uh, pay our assessments. We go to the capital campaign pool first, and then we uh, work with our other funds to make sure we meet our obligations. Amen. And so over the course of the year, we ask that every member who can will commit to $400 over our tithes and offerings to make sure that we meet our assessment obligations. Amen. So will you please stand and follow the directions of the ushers starting from the rear. Everybody say bless. 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 Everybody say bless. Turn it around and around and around. 
We thank you for allowing us to have something to be able to give. And God, we ask that maybe those who didn't give or couldn't give today, God, we ask that you make it so that next time they're able to give. God, we ask that you bless the givers, bless those who wanted to give. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We got anybody in the house that are 12 years and under? Hey, come on, we got just time to worship our way for the young people. How many young people do we have in the house? Hallelujah. It is time for a while, the way, worship our way for the young people, 12 years and under. Is there anybody in the house that if you want to, I want you to follow, go out the side door here. If it's your first time, come on, come on, let's give a hand pray for the young people. Come on, we got more than a couple. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, young people. Now it's your first time, I need you to sign them up. I need you to register and follow Chase down the steps. Chase is raising his head. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. This is an opportunity for you to learn your way. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give the young people a hand. And if you didn't bring any young people, y'all need to bring some next week, amen. Hallelujah. Train up a child in the way they should go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many, of, how many of us know that God knows our names? Every single one of us, God knows. Yes, even you, even you, God knows your name. Before you were formed in your mother's womb, God had a plan for your life, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. And so every situation that you find yourself in the midst of, good, bad, or indifferent, God is right there with you. He walks with you. God talks with you. And God will all the time make sure you know that you are his child. God says you are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. You are a lender and not a borrower simply because your father is king. He knows your name. church say you know my you know my name I know we can lift it up together say you know you know my name if you're grateful can you wave your hands to him you yeah. know my name grateful that he knows your name he knows your name you know my name say oh how Oh, how you talk with me. Oh, how you talk with me. And oh, how you tell. 
no fire can burn me, no battle can turn me, no mountain can stop me. Why? Because you hold my hand. You're walking in your victory. Within me, no giant defeat me. Why? Because you hold my hand. No fire will burn you. No battle will turn you. No mountain will stop you. Why? Because you hold my hand. You're walking in God's victory. Cause His power is within me. Turn your situation up. Act 
God honor, I give God glory, I give God praise. Amen. Today, 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 our Sunday is called Second Chance Sunday. Second Chance Sunday. This month is known as Second Chance Month. Amen. And all houses of faith are asked to have a second chance. Sunday. I'm going to ask you to raise your hands if you have a loved one. That could be a family, a friend, or maybe it was even you yourself have dealt with incarceration. If you have a family member, loved one, or friend, uh, you know someone. And if you know someone that's dealing, if you know a family that's dealing with uh, the, the, the current situation of not having their family, amen, amen. So as we can see, this affects the overwhelming majority of our houses of worship. It affects us right here at Hemingway. And so uh, there's no way I didn't want to do this. And I want to let you know that will be moving forward in this service is also be connected to what will be taking place on this coming Saturday. Say Saturday. Saturday. April 20th, 2024 at 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. right here at Hemingway, we're going to be having an expungement fair. We're having an expungement fair, and so uh, if you know folks that have been released and, they're, uh, uh, and they had an incarceration in the state of Maryland, they can come through and get guidance. Some may be able to actually get everything taken care of, uh, but they will get pointed in the right direction. They'll know what they're dealing with and the hurdles that they may be facing and how they can move forward. Amen. Uh, how many of y'all ever told a lie before? The only person that we know is lying is the one with the hand down. <laughs> hey, right? And so the reality is the Bible lets us know that uh, one sin, am I, is that right, Doc? Uh, one sin, the penalty of sin is death, right? So, so just for that one sin, the penalty is death. But we had a Savior that comes to cover our sins. And, and God, if we're honest, has given us many chances. Amen? Sometimes we look at whatever the situation was and we grade on a sliding scale. But I come to you today and I looked at a particular text that I want to read for you on today. Uh, it comes from the Gospel of Luke, the 19th chapter. I dare say I bet some of you know it. You can pull it up, amen. Uh, Luke 19, if you put it on the screen at this time. And I'll be starting, it's going to be one, I'll be reading one through ten, amen. Uh, verse one, Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. Brother was paid. He wanted to see who Jesus was. Not because, uh, uh, but because he was short. He could not see over the crowd. 
So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. Whoo, Lord have mercy. Good God. <laughs> so he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, he has gone to the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, look, look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody, anybody, somebody say, anybody, out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Verse 9, Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Somebody say amen. God bless the reading of his holy word. Uh, pray with me as I share on the message title, I was convicted. I was convicted. Dear Father God, have your will and have your way and we give you honor and we give you glory and we give you praise. Do what only you can do. And we thank you, God, for what it is that you're doing. Have your way, God. And we will keep your name lifted. On this day, have your way. On this day, save souls. On this day, add to the kingdom. Not just here, but in the sons and daughters' houses. The connection. Do it, Lord, together. In Jesus' name, amen. We look at this particular text, and you got this dude, he is swagged out. He has, the, that's probably not a good term these days. You probably got a newer one. But uh, this brother had cake. He had money. He had bankrolls. And the people couldn't stand him. Because you got to understand, what he would do is that he would show up. And literally, he was the chief, so he's probably over top of everybody that went out and did this. And so there was a tax that you had to pay, Sister Bias. And so what they would do and the reason they would hate it is because they used what was called dishonest scales. And so with dishonest scales, the whole goal was to take more than they were supposed to, amen? And so uh, let's just think about, it. I don't know what your tax bill is, but you know, I, I can remember the first time I got my first check and uh, I was about 13 or 14 working for Madbury's Youth Leadership Institute and I got that check and I was excited and I was like, who is that dude, FICA? And what they doing in my money? <laughs> But the reality is if we understand that there's a particular tax that was supposed to be charged and, and maybe they gave you $100 and $10 came out and that was what they were supposed to do, uh, what would happen is they might put another 15 on it. And so, they, they would, and so your $100 weasel down to uh, uh, $75. And, and what they were doing is that they went and stacked the extra money and so even while he was uh, of the same faith, he just operated out of a different way in a way that didn't care about his fellow woman or about his fellow man. And he was just a taker. Somebody say taker. And the reality is oftentimes in this world that we live in, we deal with takers. 
You know takers. Takers that come into the community and take everything out but don't pour a penny back in. Takers, takers that will ask you for all that you got and then you don't see them where they go. No more. Takers. And so he wasn't just a taker, but he was the chief of the takers. And so what we got to understand is, is this was a man of notoriety even while infamously. He was definitely known. Y'all know, y'all know everybody got the money. You're not going to be in the neighborhood and got all the money, got the biggest car, got all the fancy clothes and all the Jews and gems, and people don't know your name. But here he was, this guy. And, but this guy had heard evidently the stories of the great work and the power of the one that we call Jesus Christ. And because he heard about him, he was on a mission. Tell your neighbor, Jesus comes to you. Jesus comes to you. And you got to understand that we're, when we look at this particular text, Jesus was literally passing by into Jericho and was passing through. But it's evident that Jesus wanted to connect with Zacchaeus. So he is there, the chief, this wealthy brother, this, this brother with the cake that the people hated. He was there, this despised brother, the, the person that deserved the despisement of the people because he lived uh, and did that which was wrong, which was wicked. He did it. But because he knew Jesus was going to be in the building, he didn't just show up. And he knew he couldn't see over the crowd. And sometimes you might not be able to see over the crowd. You might not be able to see anybody been in the crowd and you've been trying to find another loved one and you don't know where they are and you, you know they're in there but the crowd is thick and then when you're all at the same height, it's sort of, I can see your brother Bingham right now but I can't see you. Uh -uh, I, 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 I see your brother Mac now but I can't see you right now. I, matter of fact, if I look back, I, I can see AJ in the back now but if I move around, I, you know, but what it is is he had to get himself in a position because he had determined, I'm going to see Jesus today. Anybody ever come to the house of God and say, I, I, mean, I might not got it all together, but I'm going to see Jesus today. Tell your neighbor, I'm going to see him. You can go ahead and give your neighbor a high five right there. I'm going to see Jesus today. And so what we got to understand, because he positioned himself in the right space, in the right place, up a sycamore fig tree, which was apparently based on my exegetical work, a tree that was easier to climb. He got up there and positioned himself in such a space. You know, when I was bent down there, it might be, was it difficult for anybody to see me? Raise your hand if it was a hard for you. Right, right, right. But up here, can you see me? And, and so what had happened is he got himself in a position where he could be seen. And when he was in that position, Jesus came to him. It says that when Jesus came to the spot. See, we want Jesus to show up. We want Jesus to come to us, but we won't put ourselves in position. We want Jesus to show up, but he, he like, look, why are you hanging out around this crowd? And can't you just put yourself in position? If you put yourself in position, then Jesus is going to see you. If you put yourself in position, say, you know what, Father, I, you know, no other help I know. <laughs> I just stretch my hands to thee. And he realized Jesus was going to be on the spot. And despite him being hated, despite being wealthy, and how embarrassing it may be to be found up in a fig tree as a grown man. This grown man climbed a tree like he was a boy. And here he was up in the tree, Brother Mills. He up in a fig tree, sycamore fig tree, like he's a child. But he did what he needed to do because the Bible says unless we come as little children. So Jesus shows up. Jesus comes 
to him. And I, I, I want you to know that Jesus will come to you as well. But once Jesus come to you, you got to understand that he's not going to just come to you, but Jesus going to call you. Tell your neighbor Jesus calls you. I, I'm going to need you to tap somebody on a shoulder, a fist bump them, a, a elbow, whatever. Look somebody in the eyes and say, Jesus calls you. See, everybody try and not look at the pastor when I say that. Jesus calls you. Jesus, good God Almighty, you already know. You, you, and you, whoever you, you, and you are. Amen. Bless the Lord. Y'all on the right road. Won't he do it? Jesus calls you. But what's interesting about the particular text, when Jesus calls you, he don't call you uh, like one of my old candies that I like. I, I don't know. Anybody grew up when they had these candies? They were square. They came in fruit flavors. They were hard and somewhat chewy, but hard. And, then, you know, as they got in your mouth, they were somewhat, they were shaped like a starburst, but they weren't a starburst. They were harder. They were called now and later, right? And some of us want to operate in a now and later, uh, you know, yeah, we, I, I, I do some things now, but I do the rest of that later. But, but Jesus didn't come and say, hey, uh, uh, come down now or later. He said, come immediately. That's right. It's a wonderful thing when the people help you preach the message. I say, thank you. Come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. See, what you got to understand is that when Jesus calls you, he wants to be in relationship with you. And so what he's really calling you for is greater relationship. Uh, we look at this particular altar rail, and what is the altar rail? It's for what? Prayer. It's for what? Prayer. It's for what? Prayer. If we pray, who are we talking to? God. And so if we're talking to God, it's just like me talking to you and you talking to me. We're building what? Relationship. We're having conversation. And I don't know about you, any good relationship has much conversation, much communication. And Jesus is saying, I'm calling you that we might be together. I'm calling you that we might talk more. I'm calling you that I can know what's on your mind. I'm calling you that I can hear what's on your heart. I'm calling you to know what ails you. I'm calling you to understand your pains. I'm calling you because you matter and I want to know more about you. Jesus calls you. And when Jesus calls us, we can't sit on our loins and act as if we have uh, time at the time at the time uh, and, and we can just wait till tomorrow. We, we can't wait till tomorrow. God, want, want, God wants now, not later. And so we got to get out of the mindset that we have time to do what God called us to do now, later. Somebody got to take the track shoes off and stop running. Somebody, good God Almighty. See, the problem is God's trying to take you further, but you keep running on a track. And the thing about the track is you ain't going nowhere. You, you're still in the same location. And you, where you started is where you finished. And you have not advanced yourself anywhere, but God is trying to get you off the track of running around in circles and move you to where he'd have you to be. And guess what? The beautiful thing is, society will deem some of us and actually all of us, depending on which aspect of society you are in, as completely unworthy. People in society will say you're unworthy of the presence of God. You're unworthy of God coming into your house. Your house isn't good enough for God. You, you don't deserve to have God come check on you. You don't deserve that God there in your car, in your house, at your job. He would say that you wouldn't deserve it, but the devil is a what? Liar, and the truth is not what? In him. And so this very one that everybody despised, the very one that everybody hated, the very one whose life was not in order by any shape of your imagination or mine is the one that he said, I must come to your house today. 
I don't know. I thought somebody might see that as good news. Good news because you realize that if God is going to show up at the wicked man's house, then I, you know what? God can come into my house. If God would show up at the wicked man's house, God could ride with me on the metro. If God would show up with the wicked man's house, he'd take me in my Uber or my Lyft. If God would show up where he is, then God can ride with me in my Toyota, my Beamer, or my Benz. If God would show up with the wicked man's house, then God got space and place for me. And so we got to understand that Jesus, my God, will come to us, and, and we got to understand that Jesus will call us, but we got to act immediately. But this is the part I love because some of us realize that just like uh, this man, this chief tax collector, we've done some stuff, right? I, am I the only one that's done a little something? <laughs> Am I by myself? Any of y'all did a little something that, you know, you don't want on that videotape, right? Uh, uh, anybody know that if our lives was on the videotape, all of us, we run it out, they, you know, we might get, <laughs> they had to take that rope down. They had to, matter of fact, take that rope down. You can take that rope down. Take that rope down. Because guess what? It's going to be free today. Because uh, <laughs> some of y'all might want to run. Amen? But you got to get this. That Jesus is looking at you differently than everybody else looks at you. And we got to look at the people differently than the community and the world looks at them. See, one of the things that God has gifted me with is that because I was sort of like this fella, that I can look at anybody and see the greatness in them. I can see the person on drugs and say, that's a person God will use. <sighs> flashback. I looked at you, gave me a flashback. I, it ain't had nothing to do with you, but just, you know, sometimes at that moment, it was just that moment that I looked at you. Maybe your anointing hit, hit, refreshed my mind. I remember going to work and driving down old Central Avenue just past Rosebuds, and there's a liquor store there. You know, they, they open up in our community at 6 a.m. It's allowed. And then uh, another one across the street, and all those on drugs or uh, alcoholics are, are, are standing outside at, you know, the times that we're headed to work uh, before breakfast even starts. And I saw people out, and I saw a guy. And, I, and the, the spirit, you know, the spirit will speak to you. If, if you. if you'll come and put yourself in position, the spirit will tell you things. And the spirit said, turn around and pray with him. I was like, oh, I'm already running out late. I got, this is when I had a, a you know, one of the full-time jobs, what have you, at, uh, at, the, at a government location. And uh, I was like, man, I, I, I cannot be late. And I pull up and I see, and there's another church, I see a church, and it said, Open Door, what, Open Door Baptist Church. I saw, when I saw Open Door, I'm like, all right, you turn. And I went back, I said, my brother, the Spirit of God told me to come back and pray for you. Would it be all right if I pray for you? And I prayed for him, and he gave his life to Christ. But then, it was a couple, it was a white woman and a black man, and uh, appeared to may have a drug issue, what have you. And I said, and she said, I didn't even get this chance to say it. She said, I need prayer too. I said, but come on, both of you, can I pray for you? And they gave their lives to Christ. But what I remember when I saw you is that God gave me a word for her. And she said, you know, I used to, <laughs> she used to be over to Sunday school. She said, you know, I used to be over Sunday school. I said, God is going to put you back in position. God is going to fix it and turn it around. 
and you will serve in the house of God again. And I, I don't know where she is per fact, but I believe in faith she's serving in the house of God. I do know that I, I have saw that crowd out there every day, but I know that after that day, I never saw her again on the corner. And I believe that a house of God opened their doors. And we got to understand that just because someone has a scar, just because someone uh, did something and served their time, that they don't need another chance. I don't know about you. It would be very greedy of us who have had another chance. And I do understand that some people uh, may need the help of a facility because uh, you know, we do have sociopaths that some that will not stop killing. And you know, you, you need to be in a facility, amen. And you may get some ministry up in there. But for people who have done things that the 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 uh the those in charge of, of securing have said, you know what, this person deserves freedom, then we as a church need to be free to let them in here. We need to be free to make sure they can get a job. We need to be free to make sure that we can get them access. Uh, I, I, I dare say if I gave you $200 and said leave these doors and you don't have that house and car outside, I don't know how long that will last or work for you before you find yourself in some type of trouble just to exist. And we have to give people a way to improve their lives. And we got to give people a way to not get boxed out. I, I'm just going to tell a, a story of a dear friend of mine. And, and a dear friend of mine... I, ask y'all how many of y'all told a lie before how many of y'all told a lie and he told me that he told a lie and he just, he lost his job he lost a job and the guy had told him uh one week that you know what you the out of all these people that work here you the best one i got but then when the background check came back he said well you know what uh i gotta let you go he said because uh you lied on your application you said you didn't have a record he said, man, if I put it on, had it on there, you wouldn't have hired me. He said, well, yeah, that's true. And that's the predicament so many of our brothers and sisters are dealing with. They got the skills to come and put in a fair square eight hours or 12 hours or whatever is needed, but they don't have the opportunity to do it. And we got to make opportunities so that they don't have to go back to the same thing. And we got to be welcoming in the house of God. And guess what? If God can use a Zacchaeus, God could use me. God can use anybody. And I want y'all to know that not only does Jesus come to you, not only does Jesus call you, but Jesus convicts you. Tell your neighbor Jesus convicts you. See, when I told you the title of this sermon was I Was Convicted, I hope you didn't think it was me. It could have been, might even should have been, but it wasn't. And I give God honor, glory, and praise. Because God had better plans. But Jesus convicts you. You see right in the midst of the haters hating, right in the midst of the naysayers naysaying, right in the midst of the chatters chatting, and the, uh, the scuttle butter scuttle button, right in the midst of all the people stirring up the mess. You know the people that like to keep stuff stirred up. You know they, they stir stuff better than Kool-Aid in, uh, in cold water. You know you got to use hot water if you make Kool-Aid. Ain't made it in 20 years, but, but here's the thing. Right in the midst of them talking about where Jesus was going, Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Lord, I've been convicted. I've been convicted by being around you. I've been convicted by your spirit. I've been convicted by being in relationship with you. I've been convicted about what I've been doing. I've been convicted and I want to change my life. I've been convicted and I want to do better. I've been convicted and I want to grow closer. I've been convicted and I see that there's a better way. I've been convicted and because I've been convicted, I want to walk with the Lord. I want to be convicted. I want to go back and help the poor. I've been convicted and told the wrongs that I did. I want to right those wrongs because I've been convicted and I don't know about you but conviction comes to you and me and helps us live a better life. Conviction comes and helps us choose a better path. Conviction comes and helps us go where God will have us to go. Conviction will make us do 
a U-turn. Conviction will make us give somebody a helping hand. Conviction will do the trick. Conviction. I was convicted. And because I was convicted, I'm a preacher today. And I need you to know that where you are right now does not define where you will be and what God will do with you and your life. God chooses to use the ones that the world would say cannot be used. The same world rejected Jesus, and he never even sinned. It's no wonder that people would look less upon us if they look less upon Jesus. But on today, I want to give you opportunity to get connected to the one. If we would stand all over the church, all over the church, all over the church, all over the church, all over the church. We give God honor. Put your hands together for a good God. Put your hands together for a God who convicts. And so you understand, conviction is different from condemnation. See, conviction, what that is, is when you have what feels like guilt can I use you as a demonstration? And the guilt does you this way. Come on closer. Come on closer. Come on up here. And conviction will draw you to God. Condemnation does you like this. I don't want to read my word. I don't feel right in the house of God. I don't even want to pray. I don't even want to see the pastor I don't want to see the clergy. We're going to keep going. Open them doors, please. I don't, open the doors, please. I don't even want to see the church people. If you don't mind opening the next door, y'all can't see it, but y'all can look back. And, and, and conviction will make you want to exit the house of God. Michelle, you are forgiven. And God has need of thee. Would you please come? You see, as she's coming, as she's coming, God says, you know what? I don't care what you did. I don't care who you did it with. I don't care who don't like you. I don't care who talk about you. I don't care what they said about you. But I need to bring you to the place where you belong. And in that, God is opening a door of forgiveness, of freedom, and allowing you to operate how he would have you to be. Somebody give God the glory. Somebody give God the honor. Somebody give God the praise. Right now, with every head bowed, right now, with every eye closed, and keep them closed. I got, I got a couple of appeals for you today, but keep them closed. Keep your head bowed. If you know that you need to give your life to God, would you raise your hand? Would you raise your hand? If you know you need to give your life to God, amen, amen, amen. If all eyes closed. If you know you need a church home, if you know you don't have a church home, where you're learning, growing, serving, and covering, would you raise your hand? Would you raise your hand? Would you raise your hand? If you know that you've been dealing with guilt for something, or you've been dealing with unforgiveness, would you raise your hand? Would you raise your hand? I see your hand. I see your hand. I see your hand. Amen. What I want you to do is I want you to come on down. If you know that one of those calls were for you, if you know that one of those calls were for you, come on down to the altar. Come on down to the altar. Put your hands together. Let's give God some praise. Amen. I see you coming. I'm going to ask you to ask your neighbor, are you sure one of those calls weren't for you? God bless you, 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 God bless you. And if you need prayer, just come on down to the altar. If you need prayer, if you need prayer, the altar is open. Come on down, 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 come on down. God, good God Almighty, God is doing the work. And we give God praise. Is there another? 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 I'm going to ask you, somebody, you need to turn around and look at the person right behind you. Some of you look to somebody beside you and ask them, are you sure God's not talking to you? 
and let them know you'll walk down with them. Let them know, hey, let's just go down together. Let's just go down together. Let's just go down together. Amen. God is doing his work. Amen. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. We give God honor, we give God glory, and we give God praise. Amen. Be unto God, praise be unto God as they sing. Is there another? Is there another? We give God praise, we give God praise, we give God praise, we give God praise, we give God praise. amen. give God glory and we give God praise. Is there another? Is there another? We give God praise. We give God praise. Amen. 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 Come on, put your hands together. Put your hands together. We give God honor. We give God glory. We give God praise. Amen. We give God praise. I do want to let you know that it will not be too late at the conclusion of this service uh come see me i'll be right here at the altar i'm gonna be right here at the altar amen and then after service we will have uh 201 downstairs for any new members we get to let you know about all the different ministries of the church and we give god honor glory and praise ask your neighbor one more time turn around say are you sure you're sure ask him are you sure you're sure amen
We had one young lady, and she already went back. Um, I wanted to just say her name. If you mind standing, we give God praise. She gave her life to Jesus Christ on today. Amen. Amen. Already a member, but made a decision to make Jesus her Lord and Savior. And we give God the honor. We give God the glory. And we give God the praise. Somebody say amen. Amen. And amen. going to have a closing word of prayer, but I'm going to ask Reverend Henderson, can you come on up too? I'm going to ask Reverend Henderson to give us the benediction. Amen? She's going to pray and he'll give the benediction. Amen. Take your time, sir. God bless you. Lord, we can say we love you because you first loved us. We can say we love you because you proved it in a way that you laid down your life for us. Father, we ask that you would continue to walk with us and lead us. We thank you for the second and third and fourth and fifth chances that you've given us. We ask in turn, Lord, that we are able to be as gracious to our brothers and sisters. We ask in turn, Lord, that we can give that same love to other people that we meet. Open our hearts, God, so that we may receive you. Open our ears, God, so that we may hear you. Open our eyes, God, so that we can see you. Open our mouths so we can taste your goodness. Use our feet so that we can walk where you want us to walk. Use our hands so we can touch who you want us to touch. God, we submit and humble ourselves to you because you gave us a second chance. It's in your name, Lord God, we pray. Amen. May the light of God surround us. May the love of God enfold us. May the power of God protect us. Where we are, God is. I love you, we love you, but God loves you most. Go in peace, go in peace, go in peace. And if you have a moment, now everybody can go, but I just want to put this out there. If you haven't taken 201, you can meet me downstairs. We'll get started in about five minutes. But if you are, are a, oh, women, any ladies in the house that would like to be part of the women's season, uh, 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 choir, the women's season choir, the rehearsal is on next, this Wednesday, this Wednesday, this Wednesday at 7 p.m. If you like to sing, come on, just make a joyful noise. Uh, 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 come on and make a joyful noise. Come on, ladies, 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 ladies. Uh, come on, I'm going to check and see who will all come out here too. Come on out here this Wednesday at 7, and we're going to get set for women's season. We're going to have a couple services. Y'all are going to be singing that, and so we're really looking forward to it. Amen? Amen, amen. Any young adults, if I could just see y'all here for about three minutes, three minutes. If you consider yourself a young adult, I mean, yeah, come on, come on, check me just for a few minutes. Any young adults, just for a few minutes. Amen.